Good afternoon and good evening to all of my combo fans out there. It's me, your captain speaking. If you give me just one moment, I'm going to make sure that you and everybody that you know and love are going to know about this stream. It's happening right now. I'll see you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Thursday night stream. We are back at it again. More combo, more fun, and absolute devastation. This time at the hands of Merit Lage, our favorite 2020. Dark Depths, a fantastic classic legacy archetype. This time updated for the modern era with a scam package. We are playing reanimate grief troll of kaza doom and some orcish bowmasters this is taking that classic scam package that we've seen in demir scam and adopting it in a more aggressive and proactive shall we say combo deck there's not going to be the entombs that you might find in a demir scam that can reanimate a track so we're not playing animate dead instead we're putting a 2020 into play and that is going to be a beautiful thing 
Um, we are getting some pretty amazing cards here. We know that Vampire, Hex Mage, and Dark Depths combo really nicely. Same thing with Thespian Stage. And we've got Crop Rotation and Elvish Reclaimer to find the lands that we need and get the process started. And just like Bryant has said, we are live. It's beautiful, just like my little man bun and it's going to be a great time all praise be to merit lage indeed malone so i want to talk just a little bit about a sideboard here uh this by the way is a top eight deck list from a challenge recently um of course now i'm going to forget the player who actually piloted the deck but you can find the deck list in the video description down below and uh soon you're also going to get deck list links to tcg player and card hoarder but we're playing opposition agent here which i think is a pretty nice little juke and a force of despair this one is a modern horizons force cycle one of the ones that's less played and if it's not our turn i can exile a black card from my hand and uh rather than paying this spell's mana cost and it says destroy all creatures that entered the battlefield this turn this is for goblins this is for turbo goblins and it's pretty excellent in that case um just buying us enough time to survive and make uh, another you know a merit lage this also kills something like a a uh, magus of the moon something that we can struggle against at times we have dismembers as well to deal with that but yeah oh can i turn down my audio that's a that's a new one i will turn down my audio just a tad um that I have not heard yet. I turned it down just a fraction of a percent. Let me know if that ends up working out well. And while I am already queued up for a league, I'm going to find our first opponent and we're gonna see if this ends up being something that works in our favor. While we're waiting, I, uh, we're actually, you're gonna see it over my head in our little side uh, bar. Oh, here we go for our first opponent but we are sponsored by kmc now fantastic products i have what is left of some perfect uh hard sleeves and i've just been sleeving up my epic storm to play in paper i'm super excited about the sponsorship and if you want to check it out we have a promo code you're going to see it floating above my head in just a little bit you can check them out and let them know that the epic storm sent you their way okay we, are, we won the die roll against our round one opponent, Cloudy Music, which is pretty cool. And huh, we are not going to keep this hand. Uh, unfortunately, we're missing some green mana, which is kind of important. So here, I think this is fantastic. Um, we are really, really close. Uh, this is a turn two Merit Lage. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to send an Orcish Bowmasters um, to the bin. I feel like Legolas's quick reflexes can be very important. Is it as pimped out as, Bri as uh, Bryant's? Bryant's uh, deck is as uh, probably the coolest Magic the Gathering deck in a competitive sense. I'm sure that there's some CEDH or some EDH decks that look cooler, but it's very, very rare. Um, all righty. Uh, we're just going to pass the turn and see where things go. Uh, I really, I really enjoy Brian's deck. Mine is signed English original printings. That's where I'm going. I'm, I'm working on FBB duels at the moment. All right, a flooded strand opponent. This might be, okay, scam, yeah. Oh, no, not scam. Dark ritual, doomsday. All right, that is fine. Um, hmm. Unfortunately, this is gonna be a little bit quicker. Uh, 
than I am prepared to beat. I can crop rotation for dark depths. Uh, I don't need to right now, actually, but um, hmm. we are not going to be able to beat this if our opponent can untap and win. Likely the case. And that's just kind of unfortunate. What I would really like is something like a Thought Seize that would work out quite nicely. Uh, I might be able to disrupt just enough. <clears throat> okay, I don't need to crop rotate right now. Uh, this Elvish Spirit Guide kind of helping things along. And there's just a regular Dark Depths, which is not good enough. Um, so I am going to play out a Vampire Hex Mage. And I can Elvish Spirit Guide crop rotation away one of my lands, the Urborg. Um, I just don't think that it's going to be good enough. Our opponent is likely just going to be able to kill us outright right now. Thought sees. Well, I'm going to do this now. And I'll get rid of the Urborg. Just in case that it's probably not going to help them. They might have a basic island, but they want blue lands now instead of anything else. And they're going to daze. Okay. Uh, that's fine because I have the dark depths in my hand and this may not be something that they can come back from. Okay. It isn't. All right. All right. So unfortunately I didn't have a merit lage immediately, but they did have to pass the turn and I mean, it's very unlikely that we get through this, but they did have the days. Um, all right, it all comes down to this. Cycle of Street Wraith, two cards in library. Cycle of Street Wraith, one card in library. There's the Cavern of Souls, and they can just cast the Merfolk. Yep, okay. Uh, couldn't do anything about that, unfortunately. That daze was really quite good. I don't know if I should have crop rotated away things sooner, um, but they likely had the daze in hand. So let's take a look at this really quick before we go further. Uh, this looks like a fairly straightforward personal tutor, so turbo doomsday list. Um, I don't see the one ring, which is often in main decks for doomsdays. And I don't see cabal rituals, which is another thing that I'm a little surprised at. Uh, oh wait, no, here's one. So they might have, they might have another one in their hand. Oh no, there it is. Okay. I do see cabal rituals. It's all here. It's all here. Okay. So let's go to sideboarding. We've got a few things that we can do. I like Veil of Summers, and that's probably it. Um, I guess I could technically keep Collector Oofs in. Um, Orcish Bowmasters seems pretty amazing. Um, Legolas's Quick Reflexes does not seem important. They're not going to be Swords to Plowshare-zing my Merit Lage. And I like the grief package. I don't know if we need a uh, bajuka bog. It's probably unnecessary. And uh, I'm a discard deck surgical. Yeah, okay. That seems reasonable. Um, I like the wastelands. I don't think that I need the basics. Um but I don't know. Oh, I probably don't need Sajiri Step or Kar Caracas. I'll keep. Um, yeah, they had they had at least three dazes, I think, uh, maybe four. Okay, two more cuts. Uh, it could just be 
a couple of Elvish reclaimers. These are kind of slow. I don't know. That seems actually pretty bad. That seems like a terrible idea. Um, we can go a little bit slower and cut something like the Elvish spirit guides or the trolls. And that would allow us a little bit more resiliency. Collector Oof is just to stop the Lotus petals of the deck. I actually don't know if I need that. Yeah, let's just let's just bring these four cards in and call that good. How about that? Um, okay. So I have a pretty good set of cards in here. So yeah, I'll keep this. And what I'm going to do is just thought seize on turn one off of a, uh, a Bayou. Um, I don't have the second black mana up front with, uh, this vampire hex mage, but that's just fine. Uh, we can have the crop rotation for it if we find one of the other pieces of the combo. We'll see. Mm, Bayou and Thoughtseize. I could have held up like a veil of summer there. I don't think that that seemed particularly interesting to me. Okay, so they've got a lot of cantrips. Lotus Petal is their black source for this dark ritual. Um, I'm not going to be able to take them off of cantrips. Um, so I think I am just going to take this dark ritual right now. And they are pretty far away from triple black. Okay. Uh, and we can just pass. I've always been fascinated with dark depths decks, uh, just some of the trophy runs have always kind of warmed my heart to see. And the, the idea was that you're playing no forests to play around submerge, which is not as much of a metagame player anymore, but, uh, you know, playing the rainbow lands and playing rainbow depths with, uh, fluster storm and stifle was always fun to see. Uh, interesting. Okay. So their ponder chose to not shuffle and I have a Beseju, which, um, it's probably not going to do, uh, anything at the moment. So what I can do technically is, um, you know what? I'm just going to hold up. Uh, the Veil of Summer and a crop rotation. I'm kind of just missing one more thing. Uh, I'm better off as a Sphere Prison lands in this matchup. Yeah, sure. But then I am playing not combo, and that doesn't sound particularly fun to me. Now, luckily enough, this Yavamaya is not an Urborg, so I'm not actually fixing their mana in any way. Uh, you know, they have their fetch land, they, they're perfect brainstorm, but, um, that's just fine. Oh, another ponder. Okay. And they're cantripping like their, their life depends on it, which admittedly it kind of does. And they chose not to shuffle again. Okay. Um, a wasteland would be kind of nice. Maybe I can just crop rotate for a wasteland. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Orcish Bowmasters. That is a lovely card to have. Um, so what I'm going to do is play this Thespian stage and... I'm just going to pass. Uh, Orcish Bowmasters, I'm going to attempt to get some kind of value out of it, uh, even though, in general, an Orcish Bowmaster on the battlefield is pretty tough for our opponent. Um, okay, they have their three black mana and their Doomsday. We know that they have a cantrip in their hand. Uh, that is pretty good. And let's see what we can do about it. Hmm. 
So two unknown cards. I mean, they could have shuffled this consider away with their brainstorm, but I would have imagined that they wanted a way to crack into their pile. And consider is a pretty good way to do that. <clears throat> we'll have to see. Uh, Dominique Bowmasters is delicious. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh, force, force, force. Four forces out. Uh, one, two days is and then they have two subtleties at least okay um yeah i can make a i can make a 2020 um so let's see and i can technically protect this crop rotation um with Veil of Summer. Not that that's going to be necessary. Okay. Dark Depths it is. Look at that. Um, so with the Yavamaya, Dark Depths now actually taps for mana. So it can tap to activate Thespian Stage and Dark Depths becomes a, uh, a functional mana source at this point with the Yavamaya. Um, and I'm going to keep the one without any counters on it, funnily enough. Uh, three, uh, okay, I missed one of the subtleties. Now, they have one mana up, not enough for, okay, yeah, a petty theft, um, which worked out in my favor. And do I want to reevaluate any of this? I don't think so. Uh, oh, wait, opposition agent. I have an opponent that fundamentally needs to search their library for things. Um, I think that opposition agent should come in. I'm actually going to shave a couple of reanimates here. Uh, I think that that's where I'm going to go with this. I think that just the one grief, even if I don't reanimate is going to be fine. Uh, discard fairly okay against a uh, doomsday opponent but opposition agents should definitely be in the deck. Uh, okay. And here, I cannot keep this one lander. If it had another land in here, I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to mulligan this one. Um, oh, yes. Yes, Angus did stop by and say hi for a little bit. Um, hmm. Okay, how good do I think a Thoughtseize is on the draw? And that's it? Probably not good enough. Um, I'm going to mulligan this one again. Kind of tough. This one's much better. Okay. Um, so I will keep this one. I'm going to put back a Swamp and a Reanimate and call that good. Yeah. We'll see how things go from here. Um, <clears throat> we have three good cards. So if our, yeah, if we get discarded, well, they can't take the reclaimer. So they'll probably take the Thoughtseize and, oh, they take the crop rotation. Okay. I wonder if that means that they have a daze in hand. Troll. Okay. I am going to play the Bayou and Thoughtseize, our opponent. No need trying to fix their mana or anything like that. We know that they're playing a basic island. Okay. Yeah. They did have the days. Uh, they kind of telegraphed that, but it also could have been that they just had a bunch of cantrips and a, a discard was not going to be as impactful. Um, at the moment, though, uh, they don't have cantrips in their hand. All right. And another Urborg. Well, I will play this Elvish Reclaimer and pass. This Reclaimer will eventually win the game by itself. Um, but... Whether that's going to be in time or not is still to be decided. So I'm going to cycle this troll and get a bayou 
and see where things go. What do we draw? Something good. Thespian stage is pretty good. I'm going to play the thespian stage. And we are presenting a much quicker combo now. <laughs> we found one of the halves that we needed. And um, this means that we can present a 2020 on our next turn. So fantastic turn of events for us. And all we have to do is hope that our opponent... Um, you know what? Actually, I wonder, should I get rid of the Urborg right now? Uh, I kind of want to. Here's my thinking. I'm allowing them to use this polluted delta to cast Doomsday and then untap and use it to take a land out of their deck. And I don't want to do that. Um, so I am actually going to get rid of this Urborg right now. Uh, and find a dark depths. It's not going to change the clock at all. Um, getting rid of an Urborg here, and it could potentially uh, prevent our opponent from building a pile that is more efficient, if that makes sense. Um, okay, what well, what was forty four? I just heard about the Fallout card, Lumbering Mega Sloth. Seems pretty cool tech for depths decks to me. What is lumbering mega sloths? I am not aware of that one. Could you let me know? I'm very interested. Okay, so they put a doomsday on top of their library with personal tutor. Shocking. Um, okay, another depths. And what I'm going to do is... Um, unfortunately I can't get anything with Elvish Reclaimer that would, uh, stop them. There's no card in their graveyard that they would, um, need. Oh, I also took away the Bajuka bug. I don't need that. So they are likely going to, um, if they have a dark ritual into a doomsday, then I'm more concerned about just using three mana, three lands to cast a doomsday. We'll see. Uh, Joe, it's an 8-8 critter for two green if you have a depths in play. Interesting. I don't know. They have a dark ritual. Okay. Well, we are likely deceased. Um, I guess I could have just kept up Elvish Reclaimer and bluffed that I had something going on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, one reduces cost X, X counters on permanence. Oh, okay, cool. So a minus X cost for each permanent on a counter or each counter on a permanent. Uh, that's a fun one. Ooh, wait, we're passing the turn here. What is this? Okay. This one's an interesting change of events. Uh, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, our opponent had nothing, <laughs> and we got there. Um, fun. Okay. I wasn't even taking a look at their pile. Um, I didn't say, I didn't see any bounces. It looks like they had a bunch of subtleties in their hand, or at least a subtlety. Or maybe they boarded those out. Huh, okay, pretty great. Yeah, Cloudy, it was a good game for sure. Uh, I don't know what... Uh, I was expecting to die when you cast that Doomsday for sure. But I don't know. Something worked in my favor. I'll take it. Um, all right. So, yeah, this, those were very good. Uh, I would not expect to be favored at all, Joe. So, Cloudy, I think that I... Got pretty lucky uh, to beat Doomsday for sure. I apparently just don't like decks that 
are good against doomsday <laughs> um yeah i'm running far away dominic for sure all right while we're waiting on our second opponent let me tell you about our awesome sponsor card hoarder well i'm gonna let bryant tell you about our awesome sponsor card hoarder because if you want to rent the deck i actually rented the deck which is why i have some mismatched cards and things like that um yeah or not i'm going to just get paired into our second opponent right before i could actually click that ad so you uh, don't have to worry about it uh interesting i don't think that this is bad but it's not good so what i could do is play a sajiri step for example and Elvish Spirit Guide crop rotate it away for an Urborg and then Thought Seize my opponent. Um, that seems pretty bad. <laughs> and the more I think about this out loud, because then I would need to find so much more to do things. So I'm going to mulligan this one. Uh, and this is pretty fantastic. I'm going to keep this one and I can put a redundant Urborg into the grave or into the bottom of my library. So keep this one bin the Urborg or bottom of the Urborg and I'm done. Our opponent is going to be able to go first. They have also mulliganed to six and it is scam time, but our opponent might be scamming us before we get to scam them. That underground C looks, Oh, we're good. Okay. Moderately suspicious though. Uh, oh, wow. That's also pretty nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just grief them right now. And I'm going to pitch a troll of Kaza doom. Um, brains i mean like if they daze this then i think that that's going to be great because they're not going to have uh days for my reanimate that's kind of why i didn't play the land out yet they were also representing something like a stifle and i actually want to fetch a basic right now um i don't know if actually fetching a basic is necessary wasteland is going to be problematic against me anyway but i don't know uh, yeah, what was 44? That was a very good mole. I agree. Um, <laughs> we are playing scam. We're playing depths scam. This was a top eight list. It got fifth, I think, or fourth, maybe four. Uh, no, it was a top eight. So it was fifth, um, in a recent legacy challenge. Uh, and it sparked my curiosity. Oh, Okay. Well, unfortunate. We are playing against the Epic Storm. Uh, yikes. Okay. So let's take this Lion's Eye Diamond. And I would love to be able to cast this Orcish Bowmasters soon. But what I'm going to do right now is um, just reanimate reanimate the grief um it is ironic yes uh oh have i seen any good movies lately i i mean i really liked dune 2 that was pretty phenomenal and i'm gonna take this veil of summer as well um dune 2 was really good i recently uh re-watched what about bob it's a Really good Bill Murray movie. One of my favorite Bill Murray movies. Um, I cannot recommend that one enough. Okay. And they do have a Lion's Eye Diamond. Yeah, they, they topped another Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't get to orcish bowmasters immediately and our opponent has a lot of storm and a lot of mana available to them uh let's hope that they can't convert they have a land drop and like our our hand is not bad um ah, they're continuing to cast spells i do not like this development 
Um, scamming into a blowout. I, uh, I know I definitely deserve everything that's coming my way and I'm happy to receive it. Uh, who are they hard casting echo? Oh, that's kind of fun. Oh no, just a brainstorm. They had a blue mana floating. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> the celery guy. Yeah. You are watching storm one way or another on this channel. Uh, but the other side of the table is not where we wanted it to be. That's for sure. Uh, buy you over Urborg last turn too. Yeah, I know. I was, uh, I was thinking about that cause I could have hex mage dark depths. Um, I was thinking like the Bayou was going to give us better options if we drew a green card and based on the hand, we weren't going to need just an Urborg. I didn't want to fix my opponent's lands, uh, given that they're a beseech deck, right? That's kind of where my thought went. Um, okay. Uh, just a naked veil of summer. I'm guessing that that was, oh, Interesting. I was expecting that one was going to be storm because then they were going to bargain the Lotus, the lion's eye diamond and get a, um, tendrils of agony, but I don't know. They chose not to shuffle. I'm guessing that we are deceased. Our opponent has two cards in hand. One of them is in my mind, probably a, uh, beseech the mirror. There we go words. Um, <clears throat> oh, they have another echo that they chose not to cast because we're waiting. Okay. Three mana, three black mana just immediately emptied. They're casting a beseech the mirror and they're going to sack this Chrome Mox and beseech the mirror bargain. They're going to get a tendrils of agony and we are going to lose. Uh, totally fine. We have Veil of Summer for the matchup and Collector Oof, which kind of makes me sad. Um, we'll see if we can come back from this. Okay. Tendrils of Agony, all targeting me. Our opponent has definitely, uh, won that one. Okay. Here we go. Let's do Opposition Agent and collector oof and veil of summer. I don't care about surgical extraction. Uh, force of vigor is, I don't know, maybe a couple of force of vigors is not the worst thing in the world. Um, I think that funnily enough, I don't think that the scam package is particularly good. Um, Hmm. Beseech is a search too. Yes, absolutely. So there's a lot of searches. Um, I do want some chicken tendies. Maybe I'll make some this weekend. Um, hmm. So Legolas's quick reflexes are definitely going. I like the Bowmasters. Um, Thoughtseize is great. Crop Rotations, Elvish Reclaimer is great. Even Bajuka Bog is pretty good. Caracas is not very good. I will keep the steps in. They have the opportunity, or the step in, I guess. They have the opportunity to bring in Echoing Truth. And I think that that's just going to be something we can get rid of. Wasteland, kind of fun. Um, I don't know about the basics. Maybe I can get rid of the trolls instead of the basics. And then three cards to go. If I get rid of like a couple of reanimates and a grief, grief seems like the better of the two. Um, and I think that this is going to be fine. Uh, Oh, Hey Newton. Yeah. Don't look. Okay. Um, if bog is good, isn't surgical better? Uh, not necessarily, but if we want to consider that I can actually, what I can do is bring all of this in and then, um, do something like this. How, how do we think about this? Fairy macabre. I mean, I could just do like complete stopping my opponent from doing anything. It seems 
bog is a five of i'm not really gonna want to crop rotate for bog unless i'm dying but you know what let's just let's just go for it let's bring everything that we possibly can against storm and we are still just a dark depths deck um speaking of which we have i mean we've got cards uh to play hmm i think i think i'll keep this i can play a bajuka bog and just pass the turn and then untap i can collect her oof and then um go from there yeah we'll see how this goes surgical extraction veil of summer collector oof three mm, medium potent hate cards against storm and i'll target them i suppose and see where things go I've been saying that a lot, seeing where things go. I, you know, whatever you pick up a, a phrase and you just kind of repeat it over and over again, uh, apparently that one's mine tonight. All right, Misty Rainforest, Island Ponder, or Swamp Thoughtseize. Swamp Thoughtseize, okay. Um, yeah, they are faster, well, probably faster than me um they certainly have faster turns but their average might not be faster i don't know who am i kidding of course they're they are faster uh you know i did actually uh newton i did have a deck that had mind break trap in it it was not a good look okay um I also have played Karn on the channel. I've I've been playing some cards that are really good or a uh, pain uh, against. Um, oh, I don't know why. I, oh, I, I didn't want to Orcish Bowmasters. That's why I clicked that. Um, I think that it would be foolish of me to cast an Orcish Bowmasters right now, holding up Veil of Summer. Orcish Bowmasters is not a blowout against Storm, uh, which is partially why I didn't list it when I was listing cards that are good against Storm. There are three Echo decks, so it's better than it used to be. But if you Echo and take seven and draw seven new cards and then win the game, um, who cares? That's kind of where Orcish Bowmasters sits in the Storm decks. Um, where it doesn't really matter if you're never giving your opponent another turn with which to play the game. Okay, so I actually have pretty close to lethal. Um, I will... So crop rotation can get a thespian stage and I'm, I don't have an Urborg or a Yavamaya out yet, so what I'm going to do is just play out the Catacombs and uh, attack. And I'm playing out the Catacombs instead of the Dark Depths, which is known information versus unknown information, because if they do end up wheeling... Um, I want to have mana available for potential interaction, if that makes sense. I think that that's more important here. Um, okay, so they get their surveil land and they know I have a surgical extraction um, and they kept something on top. It's not worth me surgicaling just to shuffle their library or anything like that, but I mean, it's not nothing. Uh, this does also have a, sur a, a surve surveil land. Excuse me, I can't speak. A surveil land to get. Um, we'll see how important that is and if that happens this turn or not. Our opponent is also playing Bloodstained Mire. So this is not 
a common fetch land. It's not currently being played in. Um, no, wait, no, no. Never mind. I'm thinking under uh, polluted delta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloodstained mire and misty rainforest are the two lands. Never mind. Um, dark ritual. Okay, that's fine. Another dark ritual. I know, I don't know the epic storm. Oh, shocking. Um, now, let's see what our opponent does. If this is a Beseech the Mirror, they have to sack the Lion's Eye Diamond, and then I can exile the Dark Rituals and be good, I guess. Um, this may be a, okay, burning wish here. Uh, that's fine. Is this going, this is going to get uh, empty the Warrens or an echo of eons. Echo of eons was the get. And We'll see what happens. Uh, Bolus's Citadel Storm. Um, it is an interesting deck. It's Bolus's Citadel is certainly better when you can tinker for it in Vintage. Um, it's not quite as good in Legacy. However, it's been done before, but not to great effect. There's a, a Goblin Welder Bolus's Citadel option, which can be interesting. Um, but anyway, uh, only one that plays commercial district in legacy. Oh, for sure. Uh, okay. So another burning wish. Sure. They have one card in hand, which I know is an echo of eons. I'm not sure. <laughs> Joe, yeah, absolutely. There should probably be a website to tell me more about the Epic Storm. You can actually find my article that talks about the addition of Commercial District um, <clears throat> on the website. So, you know, <laughs> there is something going on for that. Uh, I'm curious what this Burning Wish is for because they used two additional mana instead of... Um, just echoing their last card is an echo. Uh, they chose galvanic relay. That's not, you don't have the mana for that opponent. I'm sorry. Uh, not sure what was going on there, but the epic storm can be a t difficult deck to play. So what I'm going to do is surgical extract the, probably the dark rituals, as opposed to the lion's eye diamonds um, that will give them less mana to work with when it comes to um, actually hold up. Hold up. I have veil of summer. So tendrils of agony is not going to work anymore. They need to win with grape shot or empty the Warrens. And if they're going to do that, lion's eye diamond is better at promoting that kind of line. So I'm actually going to surgical extract the lion's eye diamonds instead of the dark rituals. Um, yeah. Uh, veil first. Why would I veil first? Um, I guess I, I could, but I'm going to veil before they draw cards. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, they do not have... Echoing truths. Okay. And then I will veil. Okay. And away we go. All of these. They don't have green mana, so all of these uh, Orcish Bowmaster triggers are actually going to work. Um, oh, Veil before the Echo. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I have a Force of Vigor and a Crop Rotation. Um, 
Okay. Uh, and the Hex Mage Dark Depths combo all rolled up. So I'm feeling okay, but there's definitely a real possibility that our opponent can find a Grape Shot win here. Um, I just have to pretty carefully select how things are going. So one of the best ways to get a Grape Shot kill right now is Song of Creation, and I got that covered. Oh, okay. So our opponent agrees, uh, which is nice to hear. And I'm going to evaluate this again. Um, I don't think I need Echoing Deeps. Um, and I don't know if I want griefs uh, in more, um, in higher numbers. Like maybe uh, another grief and get rid of the Echoing Deeps. I also could get rid of the Sajiri Step and grab another grief. Uh, these are just, I mean, the Caracas technically has uh, an untapped ability, but the rest of them are just tap lands. And I think that that's not necessary to my game plan. Uh, griefs are just free spells. So I think that's fine. It's not free, but you know what I mean? Um, okay. We'll see how these go. Force of vigor. Three Dark Depths is tough. Veil of Summer is the only thing going for this hand. I think I am going to mulligan this one. Uh, the Force of Vigor could technically stop some kind of early action, but I, it would have to be something that was perfectly timed, and I would lose my other piece of interaction to do it. So mulligan it is. Uh, this I will keep. Uh, keep this one, and I'm going to put back the Swamp. Um, yeah, Swamp it is, and <clears throat> we're going to have to see if we can get to a point where uh, thought sees on our opponent actually occurs. Well, now I want the Force of Vigor. Oh, we're just echoing. Um, okay. So what I am going to do is exile this Elvish Spirit Guide just in case I draw a Veil of Summer. Um, I did not. Although I don't hate my hand, it's not particularly good. Uh, it gives me a turn one grief and a, a an elf, which is not the end of the world, but, you know, it's going to be a slow grind. before you can do the peer. Yeah, uh, peer's a little bit harder when you have a, an Orcish Bowmasters out and no way to cast Veil of Summer, but yeah. Uh, and you can still do non-Song of Creation grape shot lines, uh, typically involving the graveyard after a large guy as well. Okay, ponder it is. So they forcibly mulliganed, or, uh, well, shuffled and, and drew us another card, I guess. Um, a forced mulligan to seven, and they have a Mox Opal in the battlefield. So, uh, okay, well, they've got some more things going on. I was expecting them to have been done, but their ponder chose not to shuffle. And we're spinning again. Okay. Oh, that was, uh, ooh. I would have waited. Uh, that's a deterministic win next turn, I guess. Oh, they, it, they didn't have protection. Okay, fine. Uh, we have a Veil of Summer now. So that's pretty good. And quite a return in terms, I, I don't have disruption necessarily. Um, For 20 after an echo. Yeah, for sure, Newton. It is it is difficult to guys after uh, an echo. But okay, what I'm going to do is Veil of Summer here because I don't have green mana available to me, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, we have a tabby. No, we do not have a tabernacle. Okay. Potentially good card. 
I am not going to play the Urborg and help them. Uh, so I'm going to just play this Thespian stage and pass. I will have to play the Urborg next turn if I want to hold up Orcish Bowmasters. But kind of what I want to draw is a Yavamaya. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, Veil of Summer wouldn't even be good because I don't have the green mana for it. Uh, Thoughtseize would be okay. Uh, dis- discard in general would be pretty okay. Uh, okay, they have a Thoughtseize. I have a fairly Thoughtseize proof hand. Uh, they're going to take the Orcish Bowmasters because of that, likely. And that kind of tells me I don't want to play the Urborg. I get that they just, they I have black now, but Beseech the Mirror being triple black, I don't want to give them the mana for that if I can help it. I mean, this Volcanic Island is just not going to cast it. So, ooh, wow. Okay, well, I've got a full house and I'm just not going to play the Urborg give them one turn with that mana fixing, not two. Um, it might be completely useless and not necessary, but it is, oh wow, yeah, especially now. Uh, it is the, the, the choice that I have to make, so I will make it. And it's giving me one more chance to draw a Yavamaya or something like that. Um, I have green. I mean, I can, yes, I can Thespian stage a bayou or something like that, yes. Um, so, yes, I do have a bayou, but unfortunately, uh, not until I can just present lethal instead. So, that'll be fine. The burning wish, okay, what are we getting? I don't know. This seems like an echo get. Um which, okay, I I don't feel like I would have needed to. Yeah, it is an echo. So they were they they could have wheeled me into an orcish bowmasters. Okay, they're not going to do that. Uh, at which point I wouldn't have had two mana to cast it with the herborg still in my hand. But um, I wouldn't have had green mana for a veil of summer anyway. So. I think that's fine. Yeah, green mana. Look at that. <clears throat> well, here goes nothing. I have given them triple black mana, which I was hesitant to do. But we'll just have to see what ends up happening here. Hmm. brainstorm from our opponent and the world is their oyster they have been i mean they had the surveil they have a brainstorm they had a burning wish to get the echo um they can surveil the echo into the graveyard if they want and then flash it back with like a lotus petal or something like that We'll see. Um, Lotus Petal. Okay. Lotus Petal. Mox Opal is on. Um, Dark Ritual. Okay, so I didn't need to worry about that Urborg for this turn. They were going to have the three mana to do what they wanted. Okay. So if they have a Beseech the Mirror, two Rituals and a Beseech is going to be enough to kill me with the guy as well. And unfortunately, I'm not going to have untapped green mana to crop rotation into a Bajuka Bog. Um, I 
could copy a bayou or a commercial district. However, the thespian stage would at that point be tapped. So, um, ooh. Okay, so this is probably still just Beseech the Mirror. I just don't have green mana or an Elvish Spirit Guide. <clears throat> so this would this is going to be lethal if they have a Beseech. Uh, Thoughtseize was pretty good protection. So playing around Mind Break Trap. Not playing necessarily around a Veil of Summer. Elvish Spirit Guide Veil of Summer. But... Um, Still, I am waiting with bated breath. I am very curious. Uh, mini tendrils to get up over 20 and buy a turn could be a thing. Yes, it could be. Um, it would be a very good thing, actually. Uh, okay, beseech the mirror. And this is going to do it, but I'm going to make them actually cast the spells. Uh, once they get a Gaia's Will on the stack, I think I'll be good. Uh, I can concede here. Yeah, it's a tough matchup, that's for sure. And the Epic Storm won, so I can't really be that upset. Um, it was a, it was a well-fought game. That was a lot of wheels, and uh, our opponent, who was designed to win with wheels, uh, came out on top. So, all in all, pretty excited to see the Epic Storm win. All right, let me actually get to the card hoarder thing that I was actually going to tell you about before. Uh, throwing to make the, yeah, paid actor here. Um, awesome time, though. All right, if you want to play scam depths and lose to the epic storm so that the epic storm looks good you certainly can uh card hoarder has an awesome rental account and i'll have bryant tell you a little bit about it with card hoarder renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier there isn't a more affordable solution for magic online want to play the deck in this video check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from card hoarder did you know you can rent the epic storm from card hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week we've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at the epicstorm.com slash deck list all righty so we are still waiting on our opponent because i forgot to click the button um i pressed the button on my mouse and it didn't click apparently because i am a professional uh card hoarder really is the best and i've been actually using card hoarder for a lot longer than sponsorships existed Cliff Boyardee, I recognize the name. I cannot remember what they play or what they're known for playing, but that's all right. Uh, yeah, you know, th this does farm Delver like a boss, but that's all good. Uh, okay, I'm not going to keep this. Oh, wait, no, this is great. Uh, yeah, this is this is just fine. So... It caves to a discard spell, uh, but what I can do is I can play a Beseju, crop rotate the Beseju away for an Urborg, and then on turn two, I have Dark Depths Vampire Hex Mage. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to keep this. So let's see what our opponent is doing. Uh, our, our chef friend, Cliff Boyardee, and... Um, I don't know. We'll see. See where things go. Now, if they... Um... Okay. Well, I am going to play the Verdant Catacombs out instead of the Beseju. Um, Beseju can hit something like a Wasteland if I need it to before exposing Dark Depths. Uh, and if they fetch, I'm going to just fetch and crop rotate under a daze. <clears throat> Volcanic Island. Um, let's see. I am going to end of turn find our, 
I mean, this could be a stifle. Uh, I was going to find our surveil land here, underground mortuary. And we get a thespian stage. Okay. That is pretty interesting. Um, it offer, offers some redundancy, and I don't actually have to commit to a hyper-aggressive line. I like that. Um, obviously, it's not going to turn the vampire hex mages on, but I can cast a bow masters, for example. Um, so, yeah, let's just play the stage, and I'm holding up bow masters. Give my opponent some pause. They are holding up two mana as well. If they end step Bowmaster, uh, uh -huh, they are not. They're end step brainstorming. Now, if they daze this, I'm fine with that because they're not dazing. Hmm. Okay, not dazing it. They're, but they weren't going to daze my crop rotation. This might be a lightning bolt, though. Uh, yeah, another volcanic island. So this looks like Delver. That's for sure. And the lightning bolt it is. I feel pretty okay with that. Lightning bolt was going to get the vampire hex mage. And now it's not going to. We definitely do not have a combo deck, Dominic. Um, I feel pretty okay with that. Mishra's bobble. Okay. Looks like pretty standard Delver. We asked and were given Delver. Hopefully the farming does commence. I do enjoy um, the fact that I played a little bit more conservatively uh, with the Thespian stage instead of devoting uh, too many resources to a crop rotation. So they see the Elvish Spirit Guide. That's kind of fun. All right, well, they know that I have Dark Depths available now. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm not actually going to... try to... Okay, so here's the thing. I can uh, play around Wasteland, or I can play around petty theft. Now Wasteland is more prevalent in the in the pile of cards that they're working with rather than petty theft. Um, and reanimating orc would play around petty theft as well. Uh, but I, I kind of want to play around Wasteland. Uh, now I can do that with crop rotation to some degree. Yeah, okay. I can do this. I can just, I can reanimate the orc and they have to Respect that as well. Okay, brainstorming in response. It's fair. Now, I still am technically presenting lethal. Uh, I have Elvis Spirit Guide crop rotation away the underground mortuary for an Urborg, for example. It could be a uh, Yavamaya as well. And I'm presenting lethal that way. Um, <clears throat> so this isn't the worst thing in the world still. Crop rotation does play into days. No, it doesn't because I have the Thespian stage. Um, it plays into Force of Will and I lose some black mana that I would have preferred to have, but it might be just fine. Uh, playing the Besedua's land would have done everything that I wanted. You know what? That actually might have been true. Yeah. Okay. I can still get the Urborg, I suppose, but um, it might have been better to just not play around uh, play into wasteland like this. I don't know, but reanimating before combat. So my orc can get in for two, uh, forces the brainstorm. And also they're going to get another, uh, forced ping off of this Mishra's bobble. This looks like a seek the beast. Okay. So we are playing 
Teamer. And two cards are going to be Lightning Bolt and Volcanic Island. Okay. So that seems just fine. They're going to Lightning Bolt the Orcish Bowmasters now. Uh, okay. Makes sense. Before they take another one and grow the Orc Army. Now they have a land drop that they did make. Okay. So five cards in hand. I will start leaning into this. They can counter this. Oh, they don't. Okay. Urborg and survey says copy dark depths and keep the one without counters, the copy as it were. Uh, now this could be a petty theft and it looks like it. Okay. Sure. That's fine. Um, Thespian stage is pretty good. Eventually. Let's go to combat swing for two and they're going to bolt it unholy heat. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Uh, and now I can play the vampire hex mage. Ooh, wait, why didn't I? have priority in my, okay. Maybe I just click through that. That's my bad. I should have a vampire hex mage. Um, I was just talking about it and just clicked straight through. Um, okay. They have a Darcy and I have a hex mage. I mean, played around days, I guess. Uh, Okay. I am not going to pitch cast grief here. I am one mana away from, Ooh, what are they doing here? Seek the beast. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I'm one mana away from hard casting grief, which I think is going to be pretty good. The two cards that they have force of will and wasteland. Okay. They have one card in hand. Mm, might be a blue card that they just didn't want to pitch or I don't know. I don't know what they wanted. But they have a wasteland now and I don't know if that's going to go after the thespian stage or the Urborg, likely not the Besaju. Um, there's the wasteland. They have two questing druids and a brazen borrower in exile that they can cast now. Something tells me that they're going to cast a questing druid. Um, and then they can cast the brazen borrower, which would pump up the questing druid. And they still have enough mana to wasteland me. So they are getting a little aggressive. Oh, okay. So they have a Darcy and their brazen borrower if they choose not to wasteland me. Uh, okay. Thoughtseize. I do not know their last card in hand. Uh, probably not worth it. This is definitely going to be cutting it a little close in terms of life totals. I can't really attack in because uh, they would block with the questing druid. And while vampire hex mage has first strike and on the board would trade favorably. Uh, oh wait, no, I should do this actually. It's fine. I can trade with the questing, questing druid. Uh, Anyway, or not, they're just going to take it. Okay, that's fine. Even better. They could have flashed in the Brazen Borrower, pumped up the Questing Druid, 
and it would have had one damage marked on it and then i could have sacrificed the vampire hex mage before regular combat damage to kill it uh removing the counters um but i i guess i didn't need to do that our opponent thought that that was not necessary okay questing druid sure they're going wide and another Dragon's Rage Channeler. That is a lot of a lot of power on the board. They don't have Delirium yet. And they're missing a sorcery or a creature. Uh, so yeah, they, they definitely could have blocked for Delirium. Which definitely seems like what they're doing now. Uh, I'm going to trade or not trade. I'm going to block here. It's not a trade. First strike is amazing. Uh, so they have delirium now. I didn't take the three. I just took the, Oh wait, first strike. That's right. That's how that works. Never mind. I did take three, um, from the DRC. All right. All right. Legolas's quick reflexes. Hmm. I don't think that this is going to work favorably for me. Um, so I could kill this questing druid with Legolas's quick reflexes. Uh, and then they... I don't know. They just kill me on this backswing. I think that I'm, I'm deceased. Okay. Um, but in sideboard games, we might be able to get a little bit better. Now we have, uh, dismembers and probably that's it, but that's going to be good enough. Any kind of removal, maybe force of despair is going to be fine. And then we're a scam deck, which I think is going to be also pretty good. Uh, Legolas's quick reflexes seems like a very good idea. Echoing deeps is good against a wasteland opponent and we can probably shave on, um, Bajuka bog. I mean, they are a Merktide regent deck, but, uh, we're a 2020 deck, so it's got flying and our flyer is bigger than their flyer. Um, I think that's going to be fine. And then maybe shave, uh, grief and a reanimate. Maybe not a reanimate, maybe a couple of griefs being card negative maybe isn't the best thing in the world, but we can still reanimate a troll and it's functionally unblockable and goes, does, does really good. So let's see about that. Uh, well, we have a reanimate and we have a turn two depths. Okay, sure. I'll keep this. I'm actually going to, um, recognize that I have no black mana. I actually don't even have any colored mana besides the spirit guides. Uh, and I'm going to play a dark depths out first. If it gets wastelanded, I have a backup. This is kind of aggressive. I understand. However, that's what I got going on. Um, Hmm. Let's see. They mulligan to six. That seems pretty okay for me. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, it's above my head now. I'm sure it's been over my head multiple times, but Storm 10, 10% off at KMC. I really recommend it. I uh, I have really been enjoying my, my hyper mat sleeves, so... I also have something called like the hyper Phoenix that's, uh, that I'm getting my hands on pretty soon. I'm very excited to try those out. All right. Dark depths and pass <clears throat> is potentially a concerning play to my opponent. Um, I don't know what that should tell them, but 
We'll have to see. Cloudy hypermats and hard enters. Yeah, hard, uh, perfect hards are really amazing, and the hypermats have been really great. And I'm trying the the Phoenix sleeves as well. Those are relatively new, uh, and I really want to try those. Okay, so here's the Thespian stage. Maybe uh, upkeep pause. Okay, dismember is kind of nice. Um, okay, Wasteland versus Petty Theft. What I'm going to do is play around the four of as opposed to the two of. I have no permanence in play after this. And a, well, I mean, I have a 2020 in play after this, but that's it. Uh, so get the one without counters, which is the copy. And then I have a 2020. And let's just hope that they don't have a land plus a petty theft. That's the goal here. And if they do have exactly that, then we can make a play for it. If they, oh, that looks like two mana. They're tapping very quickly and they have a petty theft. Okay. It was either that or a wasteland, and I feel that I could, uh, they just had the opposite thing that I was playing for, so, you know, what am I going to do? Um, I feel like I made the right choice, and just so happened to be the, the wrong choice in the specific instance that I found myself in. <clears throat> uh, I would make it again. All right. So black mana would be nice to start having soon. Um, surgical on my dark depths would be pretty tough. Okay, thespian stage. I will play that and um, I can dismember a DRC if I feel the need. Uh, I don't yet, but... Uh, end step if it was a disguised merit lage yeah i think that that's a reasonable take i could i could see the argument for just waiting because two elvish spirit guides which are the only two in the deck for what it's worth uh would have been hard to suss out from our opponent i agree okay wasteland of my own is um mostly just going to be pointed at opposing wastelands. I'm not going to take them off of mana or anything at this point. Uh, what I can do is, um, okay, here's a brazen borrower. I can hold it up for something important. Hmm. Matt, do you normally play um, dark depths strategies? I don't. I don't actually know. Uh, what's your What's your main What's your main format? What's your main deck in said format? This looks like another DRC, potentially. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yet again, our opponent had just enough interaction and then is going wide and uh, kind of tough to deal with. Um, I can dismember here. Um, that would put a third card type in the graveyard. Um, <clears throat> so when it was closer to tier one, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to dismember a DRC. It's just going to keep hammering uh, my life total. So I'll just do that now. I'm not getting rid of the Brazen Borrower because that can be gotten by Orcish Bowmasters if I ever find black mana. Uh, no, not yet, but that's fine. Um, okay. Hey, Zabit J, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, it is going pretty well. Uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy some 2020 love soon. Um, we just have to wait just a little bit. 
All right. So one more mana, and I have, oh, of course, never mind everything that I just said or was about to say. <laughs> never mind. They've got the wasteland. It's like, oh, we're just one mana away from an actual dark depths. Uh, um, okay. So we can have an echoing deeps as a card that we can draw, but it needs to happen fairly quickly. What is this? Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this is a Merit Lage. Not a Merit Lage, I'm sorry, a Murktide Regent. Um, yep. What can I do? What can I draw? Urborg would probably be pretty good. No. Well, that's not going to do it. Okay. <clears throat> well, that ended up poorly for us. Uh, that's just fine. I think that that could have been sequenced potentially a little bit better. Maybe I forced my opponent to tap out of uh, two mana for their petty theft, and I get them in their end step and force a game three. Mm, I don't know. Uh, so let's just... Uh, move on to our uh, fourth match of the league. See if we can climb back for a positive record. Um, while we're waiting for our opponent, I'm going to tell you how you can support the channel. Uh, once this actually is a posted YouTube video, there will be a link in the video description below uh, to this deck list on Moxfield. And I can have Bryant tell you a little bit about this Moxfield link and the awesome website that it actually ends up being. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Alrighty, here we are waiting for our fourth opponent still and just uh, happy as a clam. Let's take a look at this deck list really quick. There's a lot of tech lands and secretly the mana of this two color deck is actually kind of terrible. Um, I don't know, maybe with the troll of Kaza Doom in this kind of scam package, that helps things out. You can take your thespian stages or your, you know, black lands like a, a Bajuka Bog or something like that and convert it to green mana via a Bayou or your Yavamaya and convert it to black mana. I think that the trolls might actually secretly offer quite a bit of bonus. Uh, uh, you know, when you incorporate this scam package, Legolas is quick reflexes split second, uh, hex proof is pretty phenomenal. Um, and I'm looking forward to that coming up for now. We are in our fourth round and we won the die roll. We'll see if the, uh, tech comes up or not, uh, grief and reanimate but no black mana hex mage and no black mana thought seize and no black mana a lot of black cards and no black mana so i'm going to mulligan this admittedly quite lovely looking hand otherwise this looks much much better so let's take this keep it bottom an elvish reclaimer and I understand one mana, but I think it'll be good. So let's keep this and bottom a reclaimer, a uh, redundant piece, I think. And done. We can grief and um, see what we're working with. Grief, pitching grief. Um, and who knows, maybe they're playing reanimator. 
Ooh, okay. Ooh, wow. Mono blue Delver. Uh, Stifle, Stubborn Denial, Murktide Regent, Brazen Borrower. I'm going to be taking the Brazen Borrower and the Stifle, I think. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way I take it, but um, we'll take the Brazen Borrower first. Mono Blue. What a wild run-in that we get all here. Uh, did we get bodied by the Epic Storm? Of course we got bodied by the Epic Storm. Uh, our opponent was awesome, and they totally trounced me. Not a paid actor. Hashtag sponsored, not sponsored. Um, yeah. It's almost 3 a.m. Timber Crush. Okay. Well, I'm really glad that you're hanging out here. Let's take this stifle. Uh, thank you very much. I had a friend of mine actually just come up from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, no, not the Netherlands. I'm sorry. Iceland. Not the same. Kind of the same corner of the world, but definitely not the same people. Um, he just visited his family, actually. Okay. So I have to get rid of... Uh, the things that I know about. Oh, our opponent drew a ponder for turn. That's pretty good. All right. Um, so we know Stubborn Denial, Murktide Regent. Um, now I get that the Stubborn Denial is turned on by the Murktide Regent, which I did just fuel, but um, Brazen Borrower and Stifle would stop our ability to actually make a 2020, which I feel like is going to be the bigger issue here. Crop rotation is potentially good. Uh, we'll have to see. Okay. Grief, get in there and end of turn or end of combat main phase. Let's make an elf. Okay, Cloudy, you got matched up against Mono Blue Show and Tell. A lot of basic islands running around. Wow, okay, yeah, I guess so. I mean, these are excellent um, portal islands, so I can't be that upset. It is just interesting to see. Um... Okay, no play from our opponent perfectly fine for me and we get a dark depths okay uh interesting i uh, well would be playing into stubborn denial here so what i'm gonna do is not do that i am gonna leave the reclaimer back I, I think that is just fine. Um, let's see. If they tap out of Stubborn Denial, I would be happy seeing things go the way of, say, an Urborg right now. We'll have to see. Tapping out with three mana when I know that two of the cards are unplayable is a tough ask. I understand that, but it could happen. They could have a three mana, um, uh, uh, true name nemesis. That's the card that I'm trying to think of. So who knows? And if this is mono blue, anything's possible. They could be playing, um, any draft uncommon three mana spell. Who knows what's going on over there? Our opponent doesn't either. They're just pausing and waiting and waiting and waiting. All right. Hopefully they make some decisions. They are, ooh, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Okay, we are mono blue stifle knot. This makes a lot more sense. Uh, unfortunately, that means that they are holding up a uh, stubborn denial now. Okay, well, that ponder was very good for our opponent. And we have a tough time ahead of us. 
surprised it took me so long. Get out of here. You could have helped me out in chat if that was uh, what you thought was going on. Of course you didn't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is thought sees them. They are either going to just let this resolve. They are holding up stubborn denial. So yeah. Okay. So that removed their interaction. And the next turn I can crop rotate for a, uh, an Urborg cast the hex mage. And I have the ability to, um, Oh, maybe I don't have the ability to survive. Uh, so if I block here, I take 10, I go to six. Merktide Regent is one, two, three, four, seven. Okay, yikes. Uh, I'm not actually alive if I chump, but maybe I, oops. Okay, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm two mana or two life away from actually um, doing good here. I remember your first time playing Magic. You probably do, Bryant. Probably was a millennia ago, you old man. But I'm sure you remember. You're sharp as attack and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't think that this is actually going to end up mattering. Urborg, Vampire Hex Mage. Yeah, so I could. Um, block the Phyrexian Dreadnought with reef or something. I, 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 this is not going to end up working. Oh, I should also play around stifle like a drawn stifle um, or wasteland because they're likely a wasteland deck as well. Uh, Clawtooth. Yeah, I remember them being Simic as well, but you know, so yeah, I'm at six. Um, unfortunately, that is <laughs> two ma two life of around surviving at one with this Merktide Regent hit. Maybe I should have discarded. Uh, well, actually, any of those cards that I had discarded, the Petty Theft or the Brazen Borrower, uh, th they all would have been problematic. So I will block here and I will go to negative one. Okay. So now we have to do this again. I want, uh, let's see. I want veil of summer that will counter the petty thefts. And maybe if they have some version of um, unsummons and then the force of vigors, kind of get rid of the Phyrexian Dreadnoughts. I don't know if that's necessary, actually, but the Veil of Summers seem pretty good. Um, hmm. I kind of like the basics, and Legolas's Quick Reflexes also seem pretty good. I can take it a little bit slower and get rid of the Elvish Spirit Guides, and I could shave... Uh, I don't really want the force of vigors. That seems less than ideal. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be going a little bit slower and grabbing the veil of summers. See how that goes. Um, hopefully we come around and turn this stifle knot matchup in our favor but uh, Stifle and Wasteland against, um, I mean, it's not the end of the, Stifle's not the end of the world. They just stifle the Thespian stage trigger and I just have to do it again. But that gives them another turn to draw a Wasteland, which is kind of my concern. Um, oh yeah, let's hope that they actually just stifle the Merit Lage. That would be 
Lovely. Uh, okay. I am going to keep this hand. I know that we don't have a route yet to uh, Dark Depths, but we have the Thespian Stage and the Vampire Hex Mage, which are pretty okay. And then I can Thought Seize them uh, and see if I need to grief them. Uh, hopefully I don't. Dreadnought is an artifact. Yes, I could technically have grabbed a force of vigor there, but I didn't think that it was necessary. Um, okay. So what I can do here is brainstorm grief pitch vampire hex mage brainstorm. Yeah, that doesn't seem very good. The dismember, I don't think I care about. Um, Hmm. Let's see. Force of will. Brainstorm. brainstorm. Oh, let's just take a brainstorm. And I can leave their hand pretty reactive, actually. I am going to do this. So they can force this if they want, but it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, they're just going to lose their other brainstorm here. And they have a removal spell and a counter spell that they can't use. Uh, they can totally use the removal spell, but, you know. Okay, and this is when they just straight up draw another brainstorm, and I'm sent sad nosing my way, just like Cloudy is just demonstrating in chat, which, by the way, if you guys don't know, um, you can chat with emotes if you are a YouTube member and we have a lot of awesome member perks other than the live chat features, but that is probably one of the coolest ones. That's for sure. So here we go. I have a thespian stage that I can, Ooh, okay. Hard cast grief coming up. Um, thespian stage can be turned into a basic Island at the end of turn. And then I can hard cast a grief I think I'm okay with this. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm okay with all of this. So let's see. Yeah, Bryant with his Bry Shock emote all ready to go. There's the flooded strand. And I'm going to copy this basic. <clears throat> It doesn't completely play around wasteland, but it is something that I can do. Ooh, okay. Um, that'll also be potentially very good. And here's a grief. I'm casting this into days. I understand that, but if that gets rid of one card, uh, I have this reanimate to back it up and I can uh, interact at a later turn. Um, I don't think that I am going to effectively win through combat damage in the, in like the long term. I think that I need to, Ooh, wow. Uh, force pitch a stifle. Okay. So I am going to have a fun time reanimating this grief and that was a nice little two for one. Uh, be on the lookout for dress down in response to grief. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that there's much I can do either. Okay. There's the Delver. Hey, it is mono blue Delver Bryant. Eat your shirt. Um, okay. Another hex mage. It's fine. But what I'm going to do is grief. And depending on what ends up happening, the uh, thespian stage can actually just copy another bayou. And I wonder if this is getting stifled. They could. Looks like it. Oh, wait, no, they're just dismembering right off the bat. Okay, sure. <clears throat> okay, because they have nothing. That's fine. 
Uh, now I have an island where I could have copied another black source. So I can't actually just play this vampire hex mage, which is a little unfortunate. Um, stifle the discard trigger and save the force. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that makes sense, but they would have drawn another card in the meantime. So who knows? No flip on the Delver is nice to see. And they wanted to draw it. So they did draw, they had the opportunity to shuffle it and they didn't, um, for whatever reason. And I'm going to copy this by you. Uh, the old border, the original bordered one as well, just so we're clear. And wow, okay, we got a swamp. That's great. That's great news. Um, here we go. Hex mage number one. And we're going to have hex mage number two. Okay, we can pass with relative ease because I have no cards in hand. Uh, let's see what happens. Delver, flip, no reveal. Okay, no flip. These are good things for me. I, because of that, am currently winning the race. If they say, put a merit lage into play right now, uh, that would be less great for me. If they put in a uh, Phyrexian Dreadnought, that would also be less good for me. There's the island we knew about. There's the Dreadnought. Okay, they have one card in hand. And, oh boy. I have to do something relatively quickly. Uh, okay, that is something at least. Let's see what happens here. I have one card in hand and it's gonna be a land or removed from play. Force of will, okay. So, um, I can't really even attack here. I have to block. This is unfortunate. Like if this Delver flips, then I would need to, um, let's just see what happens. No flip, cool. And they are absolutely shuffling. Uh, now they're drawing a random card off of the top. Hmm. Well, those Delver flips that weren't flipping were Dress Down and Phyrexian Dreadnought, uh, the two that didn't flip. So I don't know what order they actually ended up happening, but it was pretty good. Definitely uh, worth not flipping the Delver for. Uh, Okay, uh, let's see. Should I block here? I think I should. So if, I, if I'm at 13 and I block and take nine, I can hit, I can take a Delver hit if it flips and f if I find Merit Lage or Crop Rotation or something like that, I don't have to block the Delver. I can block the Dreadnought. So I think that I needed to double block here. Uh, so there we go. And I didn't need to block with the other one. That's not gonna do it, folks. Um, there we go. I am going to concede. Okay. That was unfortunate. We have a lot of crop rotations and dark ways to find dark depths and just 
didn't. Uh, so we are we are fighting for half of our entry back now, which is less than ideal, but that's fine. Uh, we certainly didn't find the success that our top eight deck list uh, did when it was published, but that's fine. Um, if you want, and you want to play this deck in paper, obviously we've talked about um, you know ways that you can find the deck list. And I'll talk to you about tokens later. I don't know. Our token pack, just so you know, has a merit lage. And I think it's pretty cool. Well, this has Grief Reanimate, but no black. This has Thespian Stage Dark Depths, but not very quickly. Wasteland, it's just kind of there. <sighs> this is not quick enough. I think that the mantra is that you need to be able to put a turn three Dark Depths into play. And if that's not the case, then I feel like I should have had a Grief Reanimate Grief. But that's not happening either. So I'm going to take a Mulligan. And I like this much, much better. So let's keep this. I'm going to bottom a Thoughtseize. Call that done. And what I'm going to do is Thoughtseize my opponent uh, to prevent any... Oh, well, actually, they get a turn. But I, I want to Thoughtseize my opponent if possible. Sphere of Resistance? Ugh. Uh, okay. Um, this is probably Lands. And it's going to be a tough one. Um, Lands is potentially Dark Depth's worst nightmare. Uh, they are a much better Dark Depth's deck and can deal with the one to three um, threats that I put on the battlefield much, much, much better. Uh, okay, let's do a Thespian stage here because I have the... Um, Urborg. So I can cycle a troll at the end of turn, get a basic swamp. Um, kill them by copying their depths eventually. Yes. That is the goal. Oh, double sphere of resistance. Okay. That one's also bad. Hmm. This is going to be, be a bit grindy, and I don't know if it's going to be ultimately successful or if we're going to be sitting here twiddling our thumbs like silly little children. Um, hmm. I can grief here, discarding the Thoughtseize, paying the two mana, should I do that? They don't have green mana of, up yet. I'm kind of glad that I don't have this buy you out. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, this could very well be a saga. Uh, no, I think I'm not going, I'm not going to have an opportunity to grief anytime soon. Uh, Let's actually just grief. I'm not going to thought seize them. That's certainly not anything I'm going to be doing. So that's fine. Exploration. They have crucible of worlds, uh, reclaimer. So I'm going to take the reclaimer here, but maze of if is just, Oh my gosh. Uh, just not a good time to be a depths player today. Okay, so I have a couple of wastelands that I can work with. Um, there's the maze. Okay, I'm gonna do everything in my power to not give my opponent colored mana sources. Um, so this bayou stays in and uh, Troll of Kazadoom versus getting rid of the exploration. I'll just have the bigger threat 
because when it eventually does get in, I want it to end the game quickly. I want to find a wasteland relatively soon. Um, okay. Uh, now they can crucible uh, if they find another land, actually, which of course they do. Okay. Um, can also take their reclaimer. Um, yes. I, I have the other reanimate for that. Um, Crucible will waste lock me. Exploration runs me out. Health tutors, maze breaks. Learn. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. They don't have a way to uh, waste lock me yet, but eventually, I do not have a needle. That's which is a little wild, I think. Uh, okay. Now this is my route to a wasteland. Wonder, part of me wonders if I need to play the Urborg out. Seems reasonable. Uh, they're not going to have black mana. I'm just attacking to get them to click. I am running behind on clock. I shouldn't be doing that. Um, I should probably actually be playing more quickly. This could have a very large grind fest involved, but um, they're just getting their thespian stages. Oh no, they're not. Okay. I was wondering if they were going to get ancient tomb moving along, but I guess not. I also really like that I have green mana without having to worry about playing a bayou. I think that that's really nice. There is a route here uh, towards victory, and I'm very excited to take it when the chance arrives. Uh, so, let's see how it goes. So, yeah, the, the, there were enough sacrifices to be made to the main depths plan. Uh, to make room for the scam package, and Needle is one of them. We're playing a couple of Wastelands and a Beseju uh, to get around Caracas and Wasteland, but it's not perfect. And they have a Ghost Quarter. Okay. So... I'm not in a grindy situation until I'm slow. I don't think that slowly melting ice counters in the thespian stage mirror is going to go well. Something tells me. Uh, but also, that ghost quarter was one heck of a find. Like, absolutely phenomenal. Um, just, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is reclaim i'm going to pay two and i'm gonna sack actually you know what what i should do is pay two like this and sack the basic swamp <sighs> yeah it's probably fine what i'm gonna do is get a wasteland they have to ghost quarter and then i can reanimate the grief to get rid of the crucible of worlds um cool crop rotations also excellent so here we go let's wasteland the maze of ith and i can I mean, they're going to be able to thespian stage here, right? Um, oh, they have two thespian stages. This ancient tomb is a thespian stage as well. Uh, okay. Um, what are we, what are we ghost quartering? Oh. Interesting. Um, 
not what I was expecting. I was definitely expecting. Huh? Um, other things to go on instead, but I'm okay with this. I think we'll have to see. I was expecting them to thespian stage the maze of Ith, And I just didn't realize that this ancient tomb was also a thespian stage. So I was expecting to have had to get through two of them, not three of them, which I couldn't have done. Um, but instead they chose to ghost quarter their own land to get green mana to crop rotation for something. At which point I might have a way through this. Another maze of it. Okay. That's fine. Um, no, they can still actually do all of the things that they want. Okay. They have green mana. Now I can play this by you out relatively freely. Um, and I'm going to reanimate grief, get rid of that crucible of worlds that would wreck my house. Crucible of worlds is gone. And I am now, I'm not going to attack with the Elvish reclaimer because I think that that's more important on backup duty. Cause I have this spirit guide kind of sneaky in the back here, but I will be, um, attacking for with two creatures if, um, yeah. Okay. Now they have multiple mazes of it. Uh, this is probably, uh, not going to work out very well for me. I don't think I can go wide enough. Riftstone portal. That's fine. That's usually just in the graveyard. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is crop rotate the thespian stage for a wasteland, the last wasteland, unless I have an echoing deeps, which I actually, you know, could, um, get, okay. Let's get rid of this maze of it and thespian stage. <clears throat> And then I can attack and get three damage through. Um, and then actually I can Elvish Reclaimer get uh, deeps and get another wasteland. So I can actually be doing pretty okay. Oh, oh, you know, yeah, that's right. They could get it. Shouldn't have done the thespian stage one. That's for sure. That was my bad. Um, Ah, that was not good of me. Hmm. Cause they could, they had a basic, um, that I kind of forgot about. Okay. Didn't matter though. Wild, um, fun. Okay wild grindy game. This needs to, uh, update. So collector oof is interesting. Surgical extraction is interesting. Opposition agent is interesting. Veil dismember fairy force. Eh, fairy might, uh, fairy might be better than surgical. I don't know. Uh, forces probably not. I, yeah, cloudy. You said it. Who, um, Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take out three dark depths. Those are not part of the equation here. Um, collector oof and opposition agent and fairy macabre are just creatures to put onto the battlefield, uh, that have text in certain occasions, right? Uh, collector oof and mox diamond opposition agent and crop rotation or any other fetch lands, fairy macabre and, uh, the dredge, um, life from the loam. Okay. I can get rid of orcish bowmasters probably. 
And I can probably get rid of things like, you know what? Actually, Orcish Bowmaster is probably fine. What I can do is I can get rid of uh, a couple of griefs and a couple of reanimates. Thought seizes actually might be worse than reanimates here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Let's see about this. Caracas, good. Sajiri Step, good. Um, eh, maybe Sajiri Step isn't that amazing. I don't think that I want the forces. Force of Despair, Dismembers. Okay. Um, we can cut quick reflexes. I was thinking that... Um, it was going to be fine, but I, I don't know if I need to bring anything else. Real fast troll seems real good. Maybe if I do this, maybe if I keep the greaves and cut the reflexes, it'll be fine. Okay, let's just do that. And then, yeah, the real fast troll ended up being pretty okay. Oh, also, Michael, I just now realized that that was you. Hello. Welcome to chat. Um, interesting. Um, hmm. probably not, probably not good enough. Let's mulligan this one. This is probably good enough. Yeah. I'm going to keep this one. I can get rid of a Caracas. Probably getting rid of the Caracas is fine. I'm not expecting to have to deal with a Merit Lage quickly. They've probably also removed a lot of their Dark Depths. Um, I like the Surgical Extraction to get rid of Life from the Loam. That's going to be a big thing for me. I don't want to deal with that that amount of grind potential. Oh, of course. Okay. Of course they have a Maze of Ith right away. Um, I want a black card that I don't mind pitching. Because this opposition agent is pretty good. Um, the deck list? Yeah, it's going to be in the video description down below. Survey says, I don't care about Fairy Macabre. So there's a Moxfield link in the video description below. Let's take this life from the loam. Look at that. Um, what I'm going to do, <laughs> this is fun. They could technically surgical their own life from the loam right now. Um, and I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reanimate grief. They're going to have to surgical it. Um, and then I can surgical their life from the loam. Like they don't have to surgical the grief. However, if they don't, it's taking surgical extraction. And, uh, if they do sur surgical it, then my surgical is okay to then collect up that life from the loam without any problem. So a little bit of fun sequencing there, uh, Taking surgical and then uh, for the grief. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that would have been better. Okay. Uh, take these in the other order. We have a grief. Yeah, you are all correct. I thought I was being cute and it turns out cute is no place for effective magic. The gathering play. Oh, well, we made them lose two life. Yay. Um, oh, well, okay. The one in the graveyard is gone. Always, always, always make sure to get the one from the graveyard and they have Sajiri step and crop rotation now. Uh, let's see. They have a tabernacle. They have swords to plowshares, uh, soul guide lantern. I'm not really doing anything out of my graveyard besides the scam package. So that's all good. Uh, let them see the oppo. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, tremble in fear opponent. 
Now they do still have a crucible. Um, so graveyard recursion is still a thing. However, um, hopefully it won't matter. I guess we'll find out. Okay, there's the crop rotation. I wonder what they're gonna get here. A wasteland might be reasonable. Urza Saga, also very reasonable. I would love to find an elvish spirit guide so that I can stop their tutoring. Um, that would be great. Hmm. Dark Depths, okay. Um, so they can make, so I can technically get a wasteland here. However, uh, I could also get a thespian stage. Okay. Yeah, crop rotation was a good draw here. I can get a thespian stage and potentially uh, find another land. Now they're making sagas, which is fine. Um, but they floated a dark depths just like out there, um, which I think is wild. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I have an opportunity to draw a land and make everything go well. Hmm. I can't remember. They had a soul guide lantern. They have the mox diamonds. I probably should have taken a better look at what their Urza saw a graph diggers cage. Uh, that's fine. It stops my scam, but I'm not concerned about that. Okay, so drawing a thespian stage, any land that is an untapped land would work out really nicely here. Look at that. Would you just look at it? Okay, so... Here we go. I'm going to tap it, sack it. I'm going to do all of this before my opponent can get a wasteland. I have a thespian stage right here. Copy the dark depths that they so graciously just floated out into play. And I've got a merit lage, and my opponent has one card and one draw step to find an answer or an equivoc equivocal uh, card. They already have the Sajiri step so in play. So like if they found a thespian stage of their own, um, then it's not a big deal. Oh, they found a crop rotation. Okay. So we have a couple of merit lage tokens that are going to bump butts, and that's it. <clears throat> They're just going to hang out. Oh, they have found the Caracas. Okay, that's better. That makes sense. <sighs> okay, that's fine. Caracas was definitely the pick there. I forgot about Caracas. Um, <laughs> got a little too comfy. Um, okay, so I have this opposition agent that my opponent should definitely not know about and does. Uh, um, <clears throat> okay, I will flash the opposition agent in, trade with one of the constructs. They have a 2-2 two -two construct now that deals me three damage. Unfortunate. And uh, let's see about this. Thoughtseize, not going to work past the turn and oh 
Oh yes, yes, he is right there. Um, if the camera was gonna show up, he would be like right here, uh, but the camera isn't wide enough. Um, so he gets to actually watch on my second monitor um, the mouse on the gameplay monitor show up, which is adorable. And he's kind of just eyeing it cautiously, waiting to pounce. Collector oof. Well, that is not death. So I'll take it. I will take the trade. And then we're sitting here with my opponent, slow melting a dark depths. Where are you, Joe? This is exactly what we just talked about. Um, and, oh, they're going to draw cards instead. Okay, that makes sense. Drawing cards over slow melting depths. Makes sense. Uh, if they draw an artifact. Oh, Urza Saga. That's a good one. Okay. That's a really good one. And Swords to Plowshares. Okay. Um, I'm not dead yet, so I will not concede. But, uh, yeah, our opponent was slow melting depths. This, we've got nine counters on this. So, you know, it's not nothing. All right, then. We are deceased. Um, we get a game three. We have forced, or our opponent has forced a decider. Um, with four swords to plowshares, I kind of want the quick reflexes in again, and I don't care as much about the griefs because we've seen how much graveyard hate they actually ended up having. Um, Farrakh Macabre was a good pitch card. I don't know about it. Uh, it might be good enough still. Um, life from the loam is real tough. Yeah, let's just, let's just do that. Um, <clears throat> hmm. not quite where I need to be and I will mulligan this one, this one, uh, hmm. So I can stage, I'm going to keep this. I think I'm going to stage cycle troll for a Bayou Bayou can crop rotate for a, an Urborg, cast the Urborg. Uh, uh, that's actually not quite enough green sources, is it? Um, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can sack the, th the stage. Okay, I'll keep this and I'll bottom the Elvish Reclaimer. I'm not going to have time for that and the Echoing Deeps might end up being a good enough card. Okay, uh, let's see. Our opponent has mulliganed to six. Love Kenshin. And we'll see how things go from here. Okay, Thespian stage. Pass. Um, forest. Exploration. What's the next one? Horizon Canopy. Okay, that's fine for now. More things. Elvish Reclaimer of your own. Okay, good start. And I will cycle this troll. Unfortunately, I'm not um, reanimating it anytime soon. And this Elvish Reclaimer is going to be very good. Um, hmm. So I can wasteland the horizon canopy here. They have three cards in hand. They're likely going to have everything that they need. The wasteland is probably better to get rid of something like a, um, Ooh, we're going to have a boy stop by and say, hi, uh, here he goes. Okay. I'm going to get him, uh, say hello to Angus, everybody, the little boy who, is very grumpy that I'm not paying attention to him. Okay, so I'm going to crop rotation. 
Oh, wait, hold up. I'm going to float this. There we go. Crop rotation, the thespian stage away. Uh, that doesn't do what I wanted it to, does it? Oh, man, you know what? I... <sighs> okay. Um, I wasn't really actually counting things out like I should have. So what I'm going to do is I got distracted by Angus. Grab myself a should I get a Yavamaya here or an Urborg? Probably still the Urborg and um, just not make a bad situation worse because I couldn't uh, recognize that I was floating a color list to try to cast a vampire hex mage instead of a black mana. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, Urza Saga. Wasteland also deals with Urza's Saga. And they have a Yavamaya, so I have Bayou's for all of my lands. Soul Guide Lantern takes the troll. That's fine. This Elvish Reclaimer is going to be tough, though. Uh, part of me wonders with, whether or not I should have had um, Dismembers in. I don't know. I feel like I was really having a lot of fun in game one, and then game two and three, I ugh, it's been tough. Ooh. Okay. What I'm going to do is pass. They are likely to try and reclaim her. And if not, that's okay. Thespian stage. Uh-oh. I'm going to just opposition agent here. They have one card in hand. Um, this deeps can be a thespian stage, can be a saga, and we have like a weird, crazy saga fest going on. Uh, oh, okay. They have swords to plowshares. That's the card that they have left. Um, I got a needle or a map. Yeah. So you're saying I could have waited. Um, seems reasonable, but now I have a Sajiri step up. Could be good. Okay, so this is going to be a stage, which if they copy Saga with their stage, um, I can stage their stage, which is a saga and then wasteland it. Um, although they can stage the forest. Oh, this is so interesting. Um, I also should play out a hex mage. Okay. I'm going to do that at least. This wasteland might save me. Uh, Hex Mage could knock the saga off. If they have swords to plowshares, then uh, I can Hex Mage the saga, I guess. Uh, they're making a token. Okay, that's fine. They currently don't have stage activation up. Uh, but they have a reclaimer activation up. Okay. Never mind. Not doing anything. Now, if they 
swords to plowshares. They don't have stage activation up. So now I'm going to wasteland their saga. Uh, or I could wasteland the stage. Uh, this is this right here is going to be a problem. Um, I think I should get rid of the saga so they don't get another tutor. Make their constructs bigger. This way, the saga that they will eventually have to get, probably get anyway, is going to be slow. Um, they just drew one card. Uh, they're all life from the loam. <laughs> ah! Uh, that was really good. And they could have actually horizon canopied and played two lands, but they ended up not doing that for some reason. Uh, one as one. Hello. Thank you very much. It's not a particularly, it's not looking very good right now. Uh, but my opponent had missequenced a few things, uh, and I'm just not able to, um, do much about it. All right. This Urborg is kind of in the way. Um, I can't really do anything with this one in play, but what am I going to do? Uh, just move to the next league. Well, actually, it's just a one and a done league. Uh, that's the stream. It's going to be one league and call it good. And I think that this is going to be the end of the league as a 1-4, which is moderately disappointing, but we've come up against some really tough matches, um, which kind of stinks. Uh, okay, they are searching. Unfortunately, I do not have an opposition agent. They have no cards in hand and they've got a wasteland. Okay, so what I can do is concede. I'm not gonna win this. Alrighty. Well, that was a disappointing end to the league. We started out strong and just never able to to get there. Uh, okay, one is one. That's uh not appropriate. Thank you very much though. Um, it is a quality concern as far as microphone choices go. That's where we're going with, uh, waste loam. Yeah. just not going to happen. So unfortunately not the success that we wanted from a top eight. Um, so that's just fine, but I think we're going to be fine. I, I enjoyed this. The meshing of a scam package with a merit lage strategy certainly is interesting. Uh, we did see that we are not playing pithing needle. We're not, we are a little bit more open to wasteland because of it. Um, and there are other things that we've sacrificed. We're not playing Lotus petal. We're a little bit slower on the dark depths strategy. Uh, but we don't have the complete scam package, uh, in terms of something like an animate dead and in tomb with things like Atraxa or Archon of cruelty. This is interesting. You're planning on one and you get hit with the other. It certainly worked out for a challenge. I think that it would probably be best to go with one or the other generally having more focus rather than splitting your, um, your attention is a good thing, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately we never came up against goblins. I really wanted this force of despair to work out. We also could have like a tabernacle at Pendrel Vale somewhere in the sideboard. Um, although that really ended up not mattering, it would have the force of despair 
text <laughs> functionally with it. So thank you very much for hanging out this evening with me. Thank you all for watching and make sure to check out the poll next Thursday to see what you want to play next. We've got a few things that are making the rounds through the rotation. This one has uh, made it through finally. Uh, we have Paradoxical Outcome, Agatha Soul Cauldron, Combo, a uh, couple of things besides. And who knows, maybe if you want something instead, we have donation deck list options available as well. Um, and you get a little bit of a discount if it's a live stream. So let me know. I will see you guys around. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.